Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I want to show you guys how to install Android x86 on your Latte Panda. I'm using the 2GB version of the Latte Panda. This should work on the 4GB version as well. Very easy to do, but before we get started, we're going to wipe the internal memory of the Latte Panda. So our Windows installation or whatever operating system you had on the unit will be wiped. It's very easy to reinstall Windows. All you need to do is go to the Latte Panda website, go to their docs and search reinstall Windows. Very easy to do. Let's get started here. I mean, all you're really gonna need is a USB stick and a couple of files we need to download. I'm using a cheap eight gigabyte 2.0 USB stick. All the links are in the description. We're gonna go over to androidx86.org forward slash download. And there are a few versions that we can download here, a few flavors of Android. We have Android x86 6.0 R1. There's a 32-bit version and a 64-bit version. We also have Cyanogen Mod x86 13.0, 32, or a 64-bit version. This is a release candidate. It has not been officially released, but it's pretty stable. I haven't had any trouble with it. Remix OS will not launch in the Latte Panda for some reason. I have tried both of these, 32-bit and 64-bit, but I just get a black screen. In this tutorial, I'm just going to go over Android x86. This is a very stock Android, the kind of Android I love. I'm going to download the 64-bit version. It'll start downloading. It's close to 700 megabytes. If it doesn't start for you, you can always click here. Next thing we're going to need to do is download Linux Live USB Creator. This should work with Rufus or Rufus, but I've always used Linux Live USB Creator when installing Android on any x86 platform. Download Lili. Very easy. It's only 6 megabytes. Wait for all of that to download. So mine is done, and I've placed it in a folder on my desktop. I have Android x86 64-bit 6.0 release 1. I also downloaded the Cyanogen mod. We're going to be focusing on the Android x86 stock version. Linux Live USB Creator. You need to install it. Very easy. Install. Next, run it. Kind of looks like GTA text to me. So from here, you need to find the correct USB drive. You do not want to flash it to a hard drive or a USB drive you have files you want to keep on. Make sure you are choosing the correct USB drive you're going to use for the Latte Panda. Mine is an 8GB FAT32 cheap USB 2.0 drive. Just triple check that, make sure it's the correct drive. Step 2. We're going to click on ISO, image, or zip. You need to navigate to where you place the Android x86 image you downloaded. Mine's right here, and I'm just going to double click on it. If you see here, it says Android x86 4.0 R3. It always says that. I think it's just telling the Live Linux USB creator how to install Android. It's never changed to 6 for me, but I am loading 6.0 in here. Live mode. Hide created files on key. Format the key to FAT32. This will erase your data. Triple check your drive. Make sure it is the correct one. I cannot stress that enough. You can check this to enable launching Linux Live in Windows. It's just going to get online and download some VirtualBox assets. Last step, click the lightning bolt. It's going to ask you, are you sure you want to format that drive? Click OK. It's going to format the key and install Android x86 onto our USB drive. When we're done, all we need to do is take the USB drive out of the PC, place it in the Latte Panda, boot it up, and I'll show you how to install it to the internal eMMC storage. When it's done flashing to the USB, it will open the Linux Live USB Creator website again, and we can close all this down. We're just gonna be moving over to the Latte Panda, I am going to place my USB 2.0 stick in a 2.0 port on the Latte Panda. It will not work in the provided USB 3.0 port. Let's move over there now. All right, guys, we're back at the Latte Panda with the USB drive we just flashed plugged into a USB 2.0 port on the Latte Panda. 
It should automatically boot to this screen. If it doesn't, while your Latte Panda is booting, you can tap F7 to enter the boot menu and then boot from the USB drive. We're gonna be installing this to the internal storage, so we need to go to Android x86 installation. You can run it live from the USB stick, but nothing will be saved. You'll set up your account and everything, you'll download some apps, and you'll go back to reboot and everything will be wiped. We wanna install this to the internal memory. Go to installation and press enter. We'll get our text here, detecting Android x86 and it should boot into the installation menu. If we scroll down the list here, the USB drive is SDA1, so we don't wanna mess with this, but we do have four partitions on the internal memory of the Latte Panda. We need to delete all of these. Make one partition to install Android. This will delete anything that was ever saved on your Latte Panda, so be warned. Go to Create, Modify Partitions. We want to go to MMCBLK0, which is the hard disk. Press enter. Yes, we want to use GPT. Now from here, you'll navigate with your arrow keys. We're going to go down one to the 100 megabyte EFI system. At the very bottom, you can see I'm scrolling with my arrow keys. Delete. Same thing with all of these partitions. Delete. 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 Now don't worry, we haven't deleted them yet. If you want to back out now, you can. It will not delete them until we click right. We want to go to new after we deleted all of the partitions and we only have one free space left here. It's 29.1 gigabytes free space. I have the 32 gigabyte model of the Latte Panda. We'll go to new, enter, 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 and you can create a name if you'd like, but I'm not worried about that. Now we have 29.1 gigabyte Linux file system created. Go to write, type in yes, and press enter. Give it a second to format, and we're done. Now it won't do anything until we click write, so if you wanted to back out before, just go ahead and go to quit. We're done formatting, let's go to quit. Now you see here we have two partitions, our USB drive, and our internal storage. We want to install this to our internal storage, so we're going to click on the MMCBLK0P1VFAT by Win. Press Enter. I'm going to format mine NTFS. EXT4 has trouble booting sometimes. I found that NTFS works perfectly. Press Enter. Yes, we want to format this. You will lose all your data. We already formatted it, so our data is gone already. Yes, we want to install the bootloader grub. Yes, we want to install EFI grub too. Yes, we want to format the boot partition. Yes, we want to install system directory as read and write. This should take a little bit of time here. The installer is going to create a disk image to save user data. This is where it gets a little bit tricky. I have the 32 gigabyte model of the Latte Panda. Some people may have the 64. We'll just click yes. Here, we need to input the size we want Android to be. So I have the 32 gigabyte model. After it's formatted, it's 29.1 gigabytes, but we installed Android and I'm not exactly sure how big that image is. I've had great luck with putting in 25 gigabytes. If you have a 64 gigabyte model, you can obviously go higher than this. Press enter. It's going to format the internal storage for us, so that's where we're going to keep all of our apps and documents within Android. 25 gigabytes is plenty of space for me on Android. Give it a little bit of time. This could take a second depending on how big your partition is. It's now syncing to disk. It will ask us if we want to boot Android x86 or reboot. I always choose reboot just to make sure everything went correctly. So when we reboot the Latte Panda, it will automatically launch into the Grub Loader. After three seconds, it will automatically launch Android x86, or you can press Enter. We're going to reboot now. So I press my arrow key down. It stopped the automatic countdown for launching Android. We want to launch Android x86 6.0 R1. You can also launch in debug mode if you need to. But when you reboot every time, it will take three seconds for Android to launch without pressing anything on the keyboard.
So the first boot on this can take a long time. If you're familiar with Android and flashing ROMs and stuff like that, you know that the first boot can be a doozy, but after that, this boots up really quickly. And we're launched. It only took me less than two minutes to boot for the very first time. We're gonna need to set up our account. Very easy, just like setting up an Android phone, you can connect to your Wi-Fi. Bluetooth does not work in this build. I've been trying to find something to make the built-in Bluetooth on the Latte Panda work. A compatible USB dongle does work though, if you have a Bluetooth dongle. I'll connect to an open network here. Click skip. It's gonna obtain the IP address, we don't skip. Now we're connected. Checking for updates. No thanks. You can sign into your Google account now. I'm gonna do this, but I'm gonna skip this part. Okay, so I'm signed in and I'm running Android x86 on my Latte Panda. I don't send hardware information or apps usage. You can if you'd like. For Google Play, the first time you install something, it can take a little bit of time. So what I recommend doing is launching Google Play. Let's just benchmark. We're gonna install the first app here. So we'll go to Geekbench 4. I'm gonna click Install. Continue. As you see, well, it worked fine this time. Usually it takes a little bit of time. What I've had to do in the past was just force close Google Play one time and then reopen it. It'll start downloading. But in this tutorial, it decided to work perfectly for me. So there we have it. Geekbench 4 is now installed right here for us. Let's go into the settings. Scroll down to About Tablet. As you can see, we're running the HD, the Intel HD graphics on a Cherry Trail processor here. Android 6.0.1. We'll get our marshmallow here. But everything works really good except for Bluetooth. Um, I haven't really had any trouble with this new release on launching apps or anything like that. There may be a few apps that are not x86 compatible and will not run. You might find that. You might run into some of those. A lot of manufacturers do make both versions, and lately, a lot of them have been integrating them together, so they usually work x86 or ARM. But it runs really good. It's very, very smooth for me. I haven't had much trouble at all. That was just a quick tutorial on how to install Android x86 on your Latte Panda. This is the 2 gigabyte version. This will work on the 4 gig. And I do enjoy running Android on these little single board computers. You have to use a mouse. Obviously, we don't have a touch screen here. I do not have the touch screen that was made by the Latte Panda team. So I'm not sure if touch does work within there. It probably does, but I'm not sure. I really appreciate you guys watching. If you could, hit that like button and subscribe. And like always, thanks for watching.